The leader of Northern Ireland's DUP is to meet EU chief negotiator Michel Barnier today in a fresh bid to reach a Brexit deal. Ahead of the talks in Brussels, Arlene Foster has said that her red line is that there should be no customs border between Northern Ireland and the rest of the UK. Well, with the deadline for reaching a deal fast approaching, the Irish border is proving to be a major sticking point. Uh, let's get more uh, on this uh, with our correspondent Maeve McMahon, who's in Brussels. Good morning uh, to you, Maeve. Uh, what will the DUP UP be hoping to get out of this meeting? Well, she'll be hoping to get a lot of air time today. The leader of the Democratic Unionist Party, Arlene Foster, will be speaking to Michelle Barnier and reiterating what her red line is. And she recently called it a blood at red line and that is she does not want to see a new border between Northern Ireland and the rest of the United Kingdom. She said it's a huge trade area with 70% of Northern Irish exports destined to the United Kingdom. She'll be reminding Michelle Barnier, she said last night, that whether he likes it or not, the majority of people from the United Kingdom voted to leave to take back control of their laws, of their money and of their border. Now her meeting today has been organised by her uh, colleague, that's Diane Dodds, she's an independent ME from the same political group. She's also set up a press conference in the European Parliament and Diane Dodds recently in the European Parliament in Strasbourg criticised Jean-Claude Juncker for what, he, what she said was the Republic of Ireland first approach in the Brexit negotiations. She said that Northern Ireland would refuse to have a semi-detached relationship to the rest of the United Kingdom and she criticised negotiators here in Brussels for using this backstop as a type of sword uh, holding uh, up these negotiations which she said would be absolutely unacceptable to her political group. And Maeve, how much of a thorn in the side is the DUP likely to be for the UK uh, negotiating side in these Brexit, these final Brexit talks? Well, that's a very good question because, of course, 10 MEPs prop up the UK at the UK government at the moment and they will have a green light on the final deal. You might remember back in December 2017 when they did actually derail part of phase one of those talks and Theresa May had to make a last dash, dash to Brussels to save uh, that deal. Problem is now time has moved on. It's October 2018. The UK will leave on the 29th of March 2019. So there's meetings taking place here day and night in order to reach, of course, that goal. Because as Donald Tusk has said many times here in Brussels, a no deal scenario would be a lose lose for everybody. Maeve, thank you very much. Maeve McMahon in Brussels there. Now, an opposition leader in Venezuela has been killed whilst in custody. Uh, and there's some confusion as to how exactly that happened. Angela and our team in the Cube have been following this story. That's right. There are conflicting statements over what happened to Venezuelan lawmaker Fernando Alban. This is him in this Facebook post, which was put up by his son, who says that his dad died fighting for democracy and freedom in Venezuela. Now, he was arrested on Friday over his alleged involvement in an incident that took place in August. Let's just play you a clip of a video from that incident. Well, what happened? Well, two drones exploded during a military parade which was being attended by Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro. Mr Alban was arrested over it, uh, but the opposition say that he was actually arrested over comments he made at the UN recently calling out Venezuela's human human rights record. But now there are conflicting reports over how Mr. Alban died. Well, what are people saying about this? Well, it's uh, very conflicting. Firstly, Venezuela's interior minister tweeted um, saying, and I'm just going to translate what he said there. He says, um, that Mr. Alban was waiting to be transported to court and was in a waiting room at the intelligence agency headquarters when he threw himself from a window to his death. Well, in a statement to Venezuelan media, um, the chief prosecuting officer said something that doesn't quite add up uh, with that statement from the interior minister. He said that Mr. Alban uh, was waiting inside the intelligence agency building and had requested to go to the bathroom uh, where he threw himself from the 10th floor of the window. Well, uh, the opposition reject both of those statements and they say that they believe he was murdered. Lots of reaction to this one lawyer in Venezuela saying that the 
the only doubt is whether he was assassinated and then thrown from the window or whether he was pushed out of the window. Uh, another um, can, um, MP uh, in Canada, Michael Levitt, says that he's very disturbed by this story as well, very far-reaching. It's developing and we will keep you up to date on it. Angela, thank you very much uh, for bringing us that story. Now, there's been some speculation online about whether two high-profile European leaders are about to have a dance-off. Angela, what could you tell us about that? Well, Belle, um, you might remember last week, Prime Minister Theresa May came onto the stage at the Tory conference dancing to ABBA's Dancing Queen. Quite the dancing queen she was. It was very widely shared on social media, but it looks like she has some competition. Let's just show you a quick video of Jean-Claude Juncker uh, before his speech yesterday. Well, as you can see there, uh, he came onto the stage and gave a little wiggle too. Uh, many prompting, uh, many to say, uh, will this uh, start a dance-off? Well, some thought that uh, he was uh, perhaps, uh, you know, not uh, very impressed with uh, Theresa May and what some saying he was mocking her and others saying, oh, it was just a little bit of fun. And um, one person tweeting saying, uh, this Telegraph journalist saying, what would a song, uh, what would life be without a song or a dance? Um, but others saying, um, was it a source of humiliation or national pride? Uh, well, what do you think? Was it a source of humiliation or was it just a bit of fun? Let us know your thoughts using hashtag Tag the cube. And to think it all started with an African visit from Theresa yes, May. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, Angela. And the cube.